Hi, how's it going? Welcome to a new experiment of mine, which is to speak a little bit more off the cuff on topics that come up in my Pro Vocal Artist community, which is my online coaching mentoring program for singers. It's also like a mastermind for artists and singers who are working on performing, writing, recording, and releasing their own music and upskilling in things like logic and their voice and their songwriting and their social media chops. And it's really fun and I just really cool stuff comes up in the community every single week that I would like to share with you. So I'm just going to pull three highlights from the week every week and then just chat. And for me, selfishly, I think I need more practice in doing this, like talking a little bit more off the cuff and finding a way to be more succinct. (laughs) (laughs) so feel free to absolutely roast me for my weakness in this um in the comments of how many words it can take me sometimes to say something quite simple i'm going to endeavor to get better and let's watch me grow yeah you can you feel free to encourage me as well (laughs) um but it's i suppose something that i'm always trying to teach the students and pro vocal artist is like you've got to make to make it better and many of them get stuck on the the high dive board they're standing on the diving board looking down at the pool going i can't i don't i'm not ready it's not not yet with their release with their social media content with their booking gigs and i'm just like you're not going to be good at this when you do it <laughs> Can you just accept that and like push them off the diving board and be like, you're going to look a little bit ungraceful when you do this for the first time, but you will inevitably get better. In fact, it would be sad if you looked back on your first time doing anything and thought that that was your best. That meant you didn't grow, you know, so we want growth. That's growth is cool. Okay, so the three topics that I picked out in the program is called Pro Vocal Artist. So we want a pro tip, we want a vocal tip, and we want an artist tip, so we'll keep it balanced. So the tip that I've picked out for pro is being consistent on social media. That is something that I struggle with. Uh, I'm doing good at the moment. I'm in a good season right now, but I can have my bad seasons and definitely a lot if not absolutely all of my students struggle with. Why is that a problem and how do we solve the problem? Okay, so why is it a problem? It's a problem because you are a human being and as a human being, you are a social animal. You are a social creature who is very um, wired for survival. That's what your brain's job is to make sure that you survive and your brain thinks you're going to die if you suffer like a level of rejection that is at volume so posting something and either a not getting a response will be interpreted as everybody hates me everybody thinks i'm awful oh my god um or getting any negative comments that can feel like the end of the world you might get one negative comment for a hundred positive comments but all you'll think about is that one negative comment you got or actually the thing that can be even more toxic or like problematic for you emotionally is getting positive feedback because you get high off that and then you get addicted to the app and to checking for notifications and to see did anybody like did anybody interact did anybody support you today and that can kind of drive you crazy and you end up starting to because that's dopamine right and dopamine is all about motivation and that screws your motivation clarity right we got into social media because usually because we wanted to we we want to be creative we want to make music and we want to um you know have a big impact with that music and we want to grow a fan base of people who are going to listen to the music that we make and then we get into the um weeds of social media and we find that we get sucked into the high of validation right of people being like oh you look fab and oh that's so fun and you're so funny and oh that's amazing and da, da, da. and you just start kind of you you get sucked into being popular and um you forget the task at hand and you forget like okay so i'm going to give you a personal example i didn't know that i was addicted to instagram stories and when people would ask me why you use instagram stories quite a lot as part of your strategy and i was like yeah like it's just so you know it's really real it's really authentic it's really like genuine me in the moment da 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 and i think it's nice for people to get to know you on this kind of rolling 24-hour basis and 
all this rationalization, when I really took a step back and asked myself, is this, is posting on, so on Instagram stories specifically meeting my goals um, business wise and creatively? And am I growing as a creator using that sh- strategy? And I was like, no, no, no. Why am I doing it? Because I get instant gratification on Instagram stories. People react to what I do. People send me direct messages and it's from my favorite people because they're people I usually um, kind of know or know. So peers, family, friends, you know, that's like some social currency that really matters to me and will matter to all human beings. And so, oh, and also because I'm, I'm dating at the moment, you're going to get guys who are coming in that you might be dating, like checking, checking out what you're doing. Like it, it, the, it got very cloudy in there in terms of clarity towards the goal of building my community for what I'm doing with Pro Vocal Artist and what I'm doing as a creator. And also I'm good at doing one minute videos now on Instagram stories. I've got it down. I don't need to improve in the skill anymore. What I'm doing right now I don't think I'm good at this right now. I don't think I have um, developed the skill of long form improvised, co- no, it's not improvised comedy at all. Why do I want to say that? That's like my initial reaction to say after improvised. Long form off script content that I'm making right now. I'm not, I don't like, I'm not doing it enough to be good at it. So I don't think I'm good at it. So therefore I should be doing it. And I think it meets my goals better because this kind of content has a lot more depth to it. Um, and therefore I connect more deeply with people who um, may potentially want to work with me um, and who even just want to become part of my community or like, the the feeling that you get from like you know this gives me a lot of meaning in my life what i'm doing right now i'm so lucky to be doing what i do and then i get on a, a call with somebody who wants to maybe join pro vocal artist and they say they've been watching they've watched everything i've done on youtube they've been following me for years blah 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 they've like used this tip and they always do this now because i said that and, da, da, da. and i'm like oh my god i have helped somebody so much and I've never met them. I've never interacted with them. I've never had it. And that blows my mind. And I'm like, that's the kind of impact I can have and that I've been able to have with yeah, starting the, doing those little in TikToks, uh, doing the long form content on YouTube and now potentially doing this. So you want to use social media. You don't want social media to use you, okay? How do we do that? How do we flip that script? How I do it now and what's working for me is first of all, making sure that the content, the time that I'm putting into the content that I'm making is either growing me as a person and as a creative is actually helping and reaching the people that I want to potentially work with and I want to help the most and is not about me trying to look cool or be more popular it's really about me being more helpful um but also the selfish thing is that i want to get better at different kinds of content so i'm sorry that you're having to watch something right now where i'm a bit new and i'm learning but i'll get better I promise. Okay, so how do I escape getting sucked in and used by social media and sucked into that emotional roller coaster of validation? I schedule the stuff so I don't, I don't, I'm not close to the action. I don't have the apps on my phone. So I, I also quit. I did relapse though. I did actually relapse for Instagram stories a few days ago. Oh, help, but I'm going to fix that. We're going to get off it again, but pull the apps off the phone then schedule everything so that you're not seeing stuff come up live. Like you're not seeing how things are being responded to live. Cause that's the problem with the Instagram story stuff. It's so instant, right? So I schedule my TikToks, my shorts, my reels, my Instagram posts, my long form YouTube. And it's so interesting as well. Look at the platform that emotionally disturbs you the most. And when I mean disturb, I mean like sends you high and sends you low. Um, and for me, it's Instagram. Uh, no, because number one, it's kind of like, it is a real flexy app. It's all about the flex, isn't it? But also it's where all of my peers, friends, family, people that I really care 
about what they think of me are there and are watching and potential future husbands um (laughs) my many husbands that I may have in the future (laughs) having had none until now (laughs) um so uh what was I gonna say but like stuff will happen over on TikTok like I'll get hundreds of comments or something will flop on TikTok absolutely flop or something will go totally viral um, and I'll get a really positive comment or I get a really negative po- comment and my emotional reaction to that is like maybe like that maybe like bloop. <laughs> there's a little blip where I'm like oh oh my god <laughs> and then if something like that when if I went viral on Instagram if I yeah, if something like got, if I got a negative comment on Instagram if something really bombed if, like somebody I really respected and admired said something awful Oh my God, I would go through such highs and lows. So you've got to keep away from the action as best you can. And think about this as your workplace and you do not want to be consuming the product when you work there, right? It's like working in a chocolate factory and eating the chocolate. That's why you should be really careful about consuming the content as well. Like just have distance unfortunately because you are a creative you're an artist and you're gonna have to use social media you're not going to be able to like the average typical person consume social media you have to create distance from it now you can definitely go in and research but you don't want to be using it the way somebody who doesn't use it to advertise and promote themselves uses it yeah put the blind post just put the stuff out and you don't don't look (laughs) um schedule it so that it's not like you know oh my god i did a post what did they say what did they say what did they say you know you're you're too in that emotion in that moment so schedule it so that your emotions die down so by the time it goes out you're like oh yeah that idea oh yeah that thought oh yeah i was excited about that oh yeah i'm not excited anymore about it but it's out in the world now um so yeah having a bit of distance from it i think that was everything i wanted to say but just don't beat yourself up about it and um know that you're human but at the end of the day, you're a human being. Don't be hard on yourself. It's not your fault that you want people to like you and to not dislike you. But I always think I don't like everybody. So it's a bit mad for me to expect everybody to like me. And don't beat yourself up for needing that validation. That's just totally normal and natural. Just try and create as much distance as possible so that you don't become addicted to that validation. Okay. Okay. The topic that came up this week in terms of vocals that I thought was quite interesting was being more pragmatic about your practice routine for voice. What deeply troubles me is the idea of a singer running scales without having established form. So I, on Sunday, I, you know, anytime I add a new exercise into my program, I want to figure out how to do the exercise properly. And so I've added step ups into my leg day and you hold the dumbbells and you step up, right? I noticed that like, sometimes I would get a feeling of activation in my hamstring and my glute, which is what I'm looking for. And sometimes I wouldn't. And I'm like, well, what? why is that varied? That shouldn't be variable. So I spent about an hour on Sunday I know I'm a loser. I don't have kids or pets. So what are you going to do? Um, or a boyfriend. <laughs> That's not an average. I would put my foot on the stepper and I learned from like an absolute overanalyzer, the king of overanalyzing, Peter Atia, the MD. So he was saying you need to put like the mid part of your foot on the step first and then your heel and then you'll feel the activation in your glute and your hamstring. And I was like, ah, yes, I can feel that. And you don't want to be leveraging off the other leg on the ground. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is you need to get into the the weeds of the exercise as well. So maybe you're using some vocal fry onset to um, get you better coordinated in your mix register. Vocal fry is a wonderful way of interrupting the pattern of pulling chest or flipping over because it helps the vocal folds, the, the top layer of the vocal fold stay together, but it doesn't overactivate the muscle, the thyroarytenoid muscle. So it allows us to have that nice connection. It allows us to have that high air pressure, but it doesn't overactivate that pulled chest muscle. And so you end up 
establishing more of a mixed voice quality. Yay. But only if you access that vocal fry in a very relaxed way and only if you do it nice and slowly and only if you build it up gradually over time. Right. So all of that attention to detail, I think, is generally lost in vocal practices when I see there are singers just running arpeggios fast, like up and down the range. Um, Oh, it like stresses me out the thought of it because so much bad technique is just being compounded without like that attention to how is the vowel formed, what's the setup here, what's the onset, what's the registration like and have we are we ready to progressively overload that much because progressively overload that's not the term we use in voice i know I, I we'd use that it's the equivalent of being in the gym and like just grabbing random dumbbells and going like that really quickly and not like slowing down and checking is this the right weight or should i drop it or should i go up higher how many repetitions am i going to do like all of those details matter rather than just like switching on a generic vocal exercise that goes from the top to the bottom of your range potentially over stretching you you may not have the right vowel you may not have the right form it's upsetting so that um that was something that came up and um just getting people to be patient about the detail and optimizing for the details and getting it right getting the form right because the last thing we want to do is compound bad form right because it's muscles and it's you know neural pathways it, it's really a lot of the same stuff that you would be doing when you're like bodybuilding. My favorite topic of discussion that came up about artistry uh, last week was engineering versus musicianship. There are a lot of singers on my program who don't feel very proficient on an instrument like guitar or piano, like an accompanying instrument. Now I would encourage them to continue developing some level of skill there, but not to get too worried too much and to actually prioritize a different skill. And that is skills on DAW, get good at logic, get good at Ableton, get good at even if it's just garage band, but preferably something like logic um, and start being able to actually have the time and space and skills to pull your own demo together so that when you get to the point and it's not that I'm saying you're trying to become the producer of your own music now because there's like thousands of hours that go into that I do still think that most singers should get a producer to come in and work with them but I think you should ha have been able to conceptualize the idea to a, as high a demo level as possible before you go to the sound designer and before you start getting into it you know taking it to a really professional level um because it, it can be just super hard for you to even know what's creatively possible you know you actually want to have you want to sandbox your own song and you want to play around with the different BPMs and the different rhythms and the different types of arrangements and bass lines and synth sounds and like you deserve to explore that in your own good time and not feel under pressure when you go to a professional and he's like how about this and you're like oh that I think sounds okay good yeah I want to go ahead with that like it, it, you, you need time and you need to make sure that the idea is as formed as possible. And so that's why I think that engineering is the new musicianship. I think it's more relevant for you to know how to do that than it is to be able to play piano or play guitar. If you're a modern artist and you are a singer songwriter who wants to release music, um, then I know it's kind of a controversial thing to say, isn't it? But I really do think it should be high, high, high on your priorities and be able to record your vocals. And I would advise a lot of the singers as well to layer in vocal comping with what you do with your vocal practice. So that vocal comping being recording vocals and getting different takes and picking which take you like and editing takes together um, just so that that becomes your day to day and you get really fast at it. It's amazing when you get fast at it. And we did uh, a co-write recently and my mind was blown by how quickly 
the singers because I would make one singer in every group each week be the producer and some of them were like Gemma I am basic like I don't really know what I'm doing and watching them get better so quickly over four weeks when they just had to do it and so many of them were like oh my god I have found my new obsession this is a rabbit hole I want to fall down forever um I don't think any of them were like oh I don't like it every single one of them found it really creative and really fun and I think so many singers write themselves off um like they think oh I wouldn't be good at like computer stuff tech stuff that's not me I'm telling you it's like it's like a game it's a game of music creativity that you want to play so play it and unlock your own ideas and have autonomy over it and don't feel beholden to other professionals and feel like you have to outsource everything so much um, especially at that early creative stage so yeah my big thing there is we're we're starting training actually live trainings are starting tomorrow in our in our program for uh, using DAW we're we're doing the training on logic but yeah it's gonna be great I'm excited about that um, so they are my three favorite topics of the week from Pro Vocal Artist and I hope uh, I get better at doing this. I hope this wasn't too rambly. I hope there was value in it. Um, and I hope that I stay consistent after all my preaching about consistency at the beginning of this episode. I hope I actually post another one of these next week and I don't get um, sucked in by the poor performance of potentially this very first one. Because of course this one is not going to go well it's fine it's my first time and it's not supposed to go well so we're going to detach from the outcome i've enjoyed the process and i'll see you in the next one hopefully bye